So yesterday, Xbox had their Xbox Game Showcase, and I think it's undisputed at this point. It might be their best show of all time. Definitely at least the past 5 to 10 years. I'll go over what they announced, but first I want to go over my predictions that I made and talk about which ones I got right, which ones I got completely wrong, and which ones that I got sort of half right. I predicted 343 Industries would not show up at all. I was right. There was absolutely zero mention of Halo, and it's kind of a mir same thing with Turn 10. No, no mention of Forza or Halo at all, and yet it was like their best show in 10 years. That just proves that this Xbox is a new Xbox, and they don't need only Gears, Forza, and Halo like they used to do. They got way more studios now. Double Fine didn't show up at all. I was wrong about that. I thought there was going to be a teaser for their next game and have it announced that it's coming out next year, but no, nothing from them. If I had to guess, they're probably in the background working as a support studio for some of these other games, because... I think that's what Tim Schafer said may happen if when they're not making their own game, they'll help other studios. I was also wrong about Compulsion Games being or not being there. I predicted they wouldn't be here at all and South of Midnight would be delayed even further. But no, we had a pretty long gameplay demo for it. And I was sort of interested back when that first teaser happened last year. But now they've revealed that it's essentially a Souls-like and that's a pass from me. I don't play any Souls-like games. But... Obviously, they've gotten a much bigger budget this time from Xbox's backing because it looks way bigger and way more impressive than I expected. Something else I got wrong, I actually thought In Exile Entertainment would be there with Clockwork Revolution announcing it's coming next year, but surprisingly, there was absolutely nothing from them this year. I really thought they must be far enough along after the showing last year that we would see something, but it's probably a matter of there's so many irons in the fire right now that they're going to hold some back. I was also wrong about the initiative. I thought, once again, we would get nothing because there was rumors of Development Hell and Perfect Dark, but no, we actually got gameplay, which I was shocked by. Because last thing we had was, what, 2020? And it was just a cinematic? It looks sort of Deus Ex-y, which is good. It looks like it's an immersive sim, and that's good news for me because I love those games. And it's got some, like, Mirror's Edge-like uh, parkour. Personally, I haven't played the old Perfect Dark game, so I had no clue what to expect. But after this showing, consider me interested. Maybe I'll go back and play the first two. Now, I wrote down that I originally I said Mojang wouldn't be there, and then I changed it when I recorded the video, saying they'll probably be there talking about the anniversary. But no, I should have stuck with my gut, because Mojang wasn't there at all. I was also wrong about Ninja Theory. They were not there whatsoever. I thought maybe they would talk about accolades for their game. But in hindsight, they probably didn't have time to do that. I'm sure this show was finalized probably months ago. And the game just came out, so that they probably didn't have time to put that stuff in. I nailed Obsidian. They uh, had avowed game gameplay, more gameplay than we saw last year, I think. Actually, you know what? It might have been a, about the same, maybe a little bit less gameplay. Uh, but there is... It's coming out this year. I don't think I've played an Obsidian game, but after seeing this, I think I'm interested enough now to play this. I might still go back and play The Outer Worlds before that, but we'll have to wait and see. Something that's a little bit concerning is there's no month yet. It still just says 2024, and we're in June now. And that seemed to be kind of a trend throughout this whole show, is not many release months, but just release years. A lot of 2025, which is vague. And even some stuff that's supposed to come out this year did not have a specific month or day. I was right about Playground Games. Uh, they had a short... I wrote down short demo in my prediction. It wasn't really a demo. It was a mixture of cinematic and gameplay. But these days, it's hard to tell the difference between the two because now you get games like Hellblade where gameplay seamlessly transitions into a cinematic and they go back and forth and you can't tell when when gameplay ends and the cinematic begins. It looks insanely good. Like that Fable might have been one of the best looking games at this show. Honestly, the whole thing looked like a cinematic, but like I said, you can tell there are moments where she's using a bow and a sword that you can see that that, that is gameplay. And having not played the other Fable games, I have no idea how this connects to the old games. I've heard people say the guy that shows up at the end was the character from the original three games, but don't ask me because I don't know. And again, that's a vague 2025 release, which I was wrong about because I thought there would still be no date slapped on it. I was kind of half right about Rare. I said that Everwild would still be MIA. That was correct. There was nothing from Everwild again. Still no Banjo. It's like year number 10 now that I expected Banjo, but I feel really bad for all the Banjo bros out there. That guy, maybe he's just never coming back. 
But the one part about Rare I did get right, which is, I mean, it's basically guaranteed every year, which is another Sea of Thieves update. They showed off Season 13, which is coming in July, which is exciting for me because I actually really enjoy that game. It can be a lot of fun if you have a good crew. But, I mean, that's basically clockwork at this point. Every When there's an Xbox show, you can basically guarantee a Sea of Thieves video. It's I don't think it's ever missed a show in six years. And I already mentioned Turn 10. Uh, I, I got that correct. There was no Turn 10 there because Forza Horizon, or I mean Forza Motorsport, the reboot, I think came out last year. And I think all of Playground are working on Fable, so I, don't ex I didn't expect a Forza Horizon 6. And I don't think we can expect that for a long time. Another one I got correct, which I'm happy about, is finally Undead Labs came out and showed what they're working on with uh, State of Decay 3. My prediction was it was just going to be another cinematic, but like Fable, they were kind of there was moments that they they switched to gameplay. You saw some over the shoulder shooting in the trailer, but again, like Fable, it's really hard. You can't really see the seams, but you can see that some interactivity is going on. I was really hoping this was going to be this year. I did predict next year, which is correct. It says 2025. No release w uh, window. Well, that is a window, but there's no, like, month nailed down. My guess and my hope is early in the year. But yeah, it was a much longer cinematic than that first one we had, and it was, I'm guessing, gameplay a little bit. Just a taste, but enough to where... And it looks gorgeous. Like, it is a massive step up from State of Decay 1 and 2. Because Undead Labs was a pretty small studio in, I think, 2013 when the first one came out. And, and it was pretty janky. Even 2 was kind of janky. And that game got updated to hell and back. But this one, you can tell they're on a new engine. And they got a the backing of a trillion dollar company. So this should be the best one of all of them yet. Another prediction I got wrong was I predicted World's Edge would not be there at all. They're the creators of... Well, not the creators, but they're the new stewards of the Age of franchise, like, like Age of Empires. But I was wrong. They were there. They had Age of Mythology retold, which I believe is a remake of an old game. And that is coming out September 4th of this year. And while we didn't have 343 Industries this time with Halo, we did, at the end of the show, it did close out with The Coalition and what they're making next, which is not at all what I predicted. I don't think it's what anybody predicted. I had, like most people had on their prediction card, uh, it's going to be Marcus Phoenix Collection coming this fall, and then I thought there would be a Gears 6 cinematic teaser for next year. But no, that's not what we got. Instead, we got what appears to be a prequel, which takes place 14 years before the original, called Gears of War E-Day. Now, I already made a video on it. I think it's a brilliant idea because I do enjoy Gears 4 and 5, but I agree that I think we're getting away from the horror aspect of Gears of War. And I miss that. I miss how dark it was. And so with this one, they're kind of going back to their roots. You got Dom showing up. You got young Marcus. And so, and we get to see E-Day, which is essentially, if you've read the Halo books, you know what Contact Harvest is. That was when the UNSC and like the people of Earth and the Spartans, they all met the Covenant for the first time. It's going to be like that for Gears of War, where we get to see Emergence Day, where the Locusts first arrive. So personally, I think that's a perfect move for this franchise. So I was kind of half right. It was sort of quote unquote Gears 6. It is the sixth mainline game, but it is going back in the timeline. I still think Collection is coming though. I, I think there's a possibility maybe Gamescom early next year. I think Collection still got to happen because most of the games are not on PC. And then let's move on to my Actablizz predictions. Uh, of course, Call of Duty Black Ops 6 was there. It started the show and it ended the show with a huge blowout behind the scenes at Treyarch stuff. That was actually fascinating to watch to see their method about how they go about making this. And you can tell this definitely had four years of development. They are completely changing movement. They're bringing back theater mode. They're bringing back the old prestige system. They're bringing back round-based zombies. So they're basically speaking my language on this whole game because I thought Cold War was a return to form for Black Ops because 3 and 4 were bleh to me. My, uh, minus the zombies, Black Ops 3 Zombies was good, but the rest of it, not so much. So I'm pretty happy to see that they are continuing the story from Cold War, but then also elements from the Black Ops 2 1986 flashbacks. That stuff's really cool. Because we saw Woods in a wheelchair, which means that's that stuff from Black Ops 2's canon. According to Treyarch, Mason is actually dead because that's the ending they chose. So after 12 years, we now have a canon ending for Black Ops 2. Mason didn't grow to be an old man. 
or they're pulling our leg and maybe he's in hiding somehow and that they're going to show that you know that would be interesting if the sequel we're supposed to be getting next year like we're supposed to be getting an actual black ops 2 sequel next year if they're pulling our leg what if they have some kind of thing where they show that scene where woods is tricked into shooting mason in the face with the sniper what if actually mason like that was a body double or something like they could pull that they could pull like oh that was a body double to trick woods and Mason's still out there. I don't know. But they're saying he's dead, so we got to take their word for it. But all that looks great. It looks like the best Call of Duty in a long time. I was completely wrong about my prediction of Phil coming out and saying, hey, all the old Call of Duties are out today on Game Pass. It was probably too... It was wishful thinking on my part. I think they might drip feed those games from now until Black Ops 6's release. Like, once a month put one out on, on Game Pass, but nothing about that. I still think it'll happen eventually, though. Uh, I nailed the prediction about Diablo 4. I mean, that was an easy one to get. They announced, uh, well, Vessel of Hatred, the name had already been announced, but we got a cinematic, the opening cinematic for that expansion that's coming October 8th. So yeah, they got a lot of content this year. Personally, I'm not a Diablo guy, so but I'm happy for those people that play that. Now, one the announcement that I'm probably the most shocked by that I was wrong about was No Toys for Bob. I really expected with like the rumors that have been going on about Toys for Bob for years now, I thought we'd get something. And especially with that weird website thing. Right now their website is only a big purple logo. And so I thought it was inevitable we would get like a Spyro 4 announcement. But absolutely nothing from Toys for Bob. There is a chance maybe Gamescom or Game Awards. So I guess we'll have to wait and see. And then we come to Bethesda and ZeniMax Media. I was right about Arcane Leon, no show. Blade is probably very early in development, so nothing from Blade again. Bethesda Game Studios, correct about the update. Starfield Shattered Space is the name of the expansion. It's coming this year. They don't they didn't have an actual month nailed down. Again, another vague year release date. Although on top of that, they did have new content coming out tonight. So last night, they dropped new content, including the creation kit for Starfield. So... Basically, mods mods like they had in uh, Fallout 4, but for Starfield. Well, official mods. Paid mods, which nobody likes. Machine Games was back to show off more Indiana Jones and the Great Circle. I'm still very excited about this game. I do think it's... Some people are complaining about the visuals and how the gameplay looks better than the cinematics. And I, to me, that's probably a symptom of... I bet one of the last steps of this game's development is probably polishing up the the, the cutscenes mostly. That's probably one of the last things. And to be honest, the previous games, the Wolfenstein games, their cinematics weren't like incredible looking. They weren't like a they weren't like an id software game, but they still looked really good. I just think the game is still being worked on and they haven't finalized the look. But we got a really long cinematic for that. And no gameplay, or I mean, just a tiny bit, about as much gameplay as we got before, maybe a little bit less, but that is concerning that there's not, it's not like a big demo. I was kind of expecting like a 10 minute gameplay demo. And another thing that's concerning is again, no month, just 2024. I will say as a big Indiana Jones fan, it was kind of cool to see Indy in a new setting, a new biome. I don't, we've not really seen Indy in like a snow area, so... Honestly, from this little snippet, this game looks like it's going to be better than the last two films. Which is not a high bar to clear, but I think it could do it. And it's been, what, 15 years since an Indiana Jones game? I think Staff of Kings was the last one. That was 09. So we are way overdue for one. And then finally, on my prediction list, uh, I was right about the Doom Dark Ages cinematic tease. Now, I had said only a cinematic teaser, like Eternal, and they would say, Hey, more at QuakeCon, but no... To my surprise and my delight, we had cinematic and just a teeny bit of gameplay, but enough to make me go, hell yeah, that has just skyrocketed to either one or... It's going to be hard to beat GTA 6. Most people's most anticipated game next year is GTA 6. It's going to be right up there with that, but it's... Yeah, it's hard to beat that. But it's definitely in the top five. I love Doom, so I can't wait to play this, and I hope QuakeCon has even more. And I made a Doom video already. That was the first thing I made after this showcase. So if you haven't seen that, you can go watch that. Now let's get to what else they showed. Stuff that I did not predict at all. There was way more third-party stuff that I that they had that I didn't expect. And some first-party that I forgot about, like Stalker. 
So EA came on stage and they showed off Dragon Age the Veilguard, which is Dragon Age 4. It used to be called Dragon Age Dreadwolf. I'm not sure why they changed the title like last minute, but that teaser is not doing so hot on YouTube. It's getting a lot of downvotes because the art style looks drastically different from the previous three. It looks like, and I, and I don't disagree, it looks like a hero shooter. However, they've shown a little bit more, and I think people are more happy with the little more, little more gameplay they've seen. Maybe it was just a bad trailer. I've never played a Dragon Age game, so I hope the best for the Dragon Age fans. You've waited a decade. 2014 was Inquisition, so you've waited a long time. And personally, I want Bioware not to screw up again because they are. this is probably their last chance. If they screw up this game, you've already had Anthem, you had uh, Andromeda. This will be your third failure in a row. Not counting Mass Effect Legendary Edition, which is great. I streamed that. But as a fan of Mass Effect, I want them not to close down, and I want their games to be good because we all want Mass Effect 4 to be good. Personally, I couldn't care less about Dragon Age. But that's also apparently coming out this year, which I did not see coming. Thought it was still a ways out. Then we got our usual annual Fallout 76 update. It's pretty reliable, just like Sea of Thieves. I think maybe... I think it came out the same year as Sea of Thieves, and this might have been, or there might have been, I think, one year that Fallout 76 wasn't there, but it's there almost every year. Uh, they talked about, it's called Skyline Valley, it's a, the first map expansion to the big map, and then they said, hey, you can play as the ghoul next year. So I'm not sure why it takes that long to just make a ghoul-like skin, basically, but I, I guess. So yeah, they're, they're capitalizing on the, the uh, popularity of the, the show. But nothing else from Fallout, no Fallout 3 remaster or New Vegas remaster, sorry. I know you guys want it, but it, I don't think it's happening. I'm going to stop predicting that now. I do it almost every year. This is one year I didn't have that written down, though. Then we got a game called Expedition 33, which looked really cool. Although, it, it was looking really cool intent, until they said it was turn-based RPG, and I'm like, I'm not really a turn-based guy, except for Pokemon. But visually, it was stunning, and I think it's... I, I don't think it's a, an indie studio. It's like a double-A studio, but man, it looked triple-A to me. And that's coming 2025 as well. Uh, and we had a World of Warcraft update, new expansion called The War Within. That's coming in July. My question is, why does Blizzard... I mean, well, I know why they keep updating World of Warcraft. It makes tons of money. But why not do something else with the IP? Why not Warcraft 4? Like... Do another single-player Warcraft game. I'm not sure why they don't do that. Or StarCraft 3, Blizzard, Xbox, you now have tons more IPs under with, with Activision. So do something else for once, man. Be cool. Something I don't think anybody was expecting was the Metal Gear Solid Delta gameplay. Because we got that first look at it at the State of Play, I think, last year. And it was kind of wild to see Metal Gear on an Xbox show when it's normally aligned with PlayStation. And I've never played Metal Gear. I know there's all these franchises I haven't touched. But as a person who's never played it, this looks pretty cool. It looks kind of like Splinter Cell. And even I, knowing nothing about the franchise, know who David Hayter is. And I could immediately tell that's David Hayter. He's back. Surprisingly, no date, though. There's no, not even a year on it. So it may not even be out next year. So, Or they're waiting for a Sony show to, to tell us the date. I don't know. We also got a look at Flintlock, The Siege of Dawn, which I feel like has been at like four of these shows. It was probably, I think it was delayed a few times, but it's finally coming out July 18th of this year. It's a Souls-like. I'm not into Souls-like, so that's going to join the piles of Souls-likes that I'll never touch. We got a look at a new card-based hero shooter called Fragpunk, and it's a 5v5 game. Honestly, it looks kind of cool. It's a cool concept where... You get new cards and you can change the rules throughout the game, like big head mode and stuff like that, which is actually a pretty genius idea to have big head mode from a lot of old shooters like GoldenEye, but like in a multiplayer setting. That's really cool. So interested to see more from that. That comes out next year. Then we got a little indie, kind of like one of the only smaller indie games, and I'm not bashing indie games here. I love indie games. There's some great ones. But it's a little game called Winter Burrow coming out next year. It's the rat game. Everyone called it the rat game. It was like a little 2D, uh, ice, I think it's isometric, little, uh, game with a rat. So that's all I really know about it is it's the rat game. 
We had a look at a game called Mixtape, which is essentially nostalgia the game. It's from, they said it's from Beethoven and Dinosaur, and I've never heard that developer name. It's a pretty funny name. But I believe it's from Life is Strange People, if I'm not mistaken. And you can definitely tell. It's just like taking music from, I assume it's like the mid or like early 90s, maybe late 80s. And kind of almost like Stranger Things-ish too, where you got a group of young kids hanging out after school, getting into shenanigans. Honestly, it looked pretty wholesome. I might actually try it. It looks cool. Flight Sim 2024. I, I Once again, I don't know if this is an expansion or a new game because Flight Sim, like every year, it's like Flight Sim 2021, Flight Sim 2022. I assume it's just updating, continuously updating the game, right? It's not like they're putting out a new Flight Sim like every year. That's impossible. So it looks like more cool little activities you can do, like advertising in the air and stuff. That's kind of neat. I've downloaded it a few times to try it out, but it just takes up so much freaking space. I think it's like 300 gigs or something. So I it doesn't stay on my system for long. Please, Western developers, start optimizing your games. Make them smaller. This It's just ridiculous. Like the new Black Ops is going to be 309 gigs or something crazy like that. It's really annoying. Our two terabyte hard drives are not enough anymore. Uh, Elder Scrolls Online had a 10-year celebration. I don't care, never played it. And then they said something about their expansion, which is called Gold, uh, Gold Road, coming out June 18th. So that's pretty soon here. We had a new Life is Strange game from Max Caulfield. Life is Strange Double Exposure. That's coming also this year. And these are ba all, nearly all these are Game Pass, most of them. That's October 29th this year. Another game we had was called Mecha Break. It, everyone was assuming it was Gundam at first, including me, even though I know nothing about Gundam. It's a mech multiplayer shooter, I think. Honestly, it looks cool. I might actually try it out. That comes out next year. The beta is this August. Then we had a kind of a strange-looking game called Wu Chang Fallen Feathers. I really don't have anything to say about this except it looked weird, and it to me it looked like another Souls-like, as if the market isn't flooded with them already, and that is also 2025. We're getting down to the wire here from this show. Only got about three things left. Uh, there's a game called Atom Fall by Rebellion, and I like Rebellion. They make the Sniper Elite games, but finally they are moving on from just Sniper Elite, like, every few years. They've done, what, six of those, five of those games, and it's like, finally, they're like, hey, we want to do something besides Sniper Elite. So they're doing a game called Atom Fall. It looks, honestly, like Fallout Light. It's like, we want Fallout, well, we have Fallout at home. That's what this looks like. World War II setting, I think but there's a mech, so I'm not really sure what's going on. It looks cool, though, and it's Game Pass next year, so I'll check it out. Assassin's Creed Shadows had a little bit more to show. I think it was another cinematic, and then at the Ubisoft show today, they had gameplay, and that is November 15th. Personally, I'm not... I don't care about AC anymore. I kind of stopped caring after Black Flag, so it's not for me, but happy for those that still love it. And finally, the last thing that we got announced here was, and this was obviously out of order, it wasn't because the end of the show was Gears, but I wanted to talk about my predictions too. Stalker 2 is finally coming out September 5th. That game has kind of been in development hell, no thanks to the Ukraine war. That, I mean, I can't even imagine trying to make a game in those circumstances. Like, you, you're, you, you, your country is at war. I think their studio actually got bombed, if I'm not mistaken. So they're lucky they didn't lose the code or anything. So like, yeah, the fact that this game is even still happening is kind of a miracle. But finally, it's been at I think like three shows, maybe more. So which means I gotta I gotta go back and play the old soccer games because I haven't. So yeah, that's coming September. And then this isn't a game, but one of the last things they talked about were uh, new consoles, uh, a white Series X, which looks cool. But I'm not going to get it because no disk drive. I am someone that loves physical media still. I have I collect 4K Blu-rays. I'm not going to buy something with no disk drive. So and they had, if, I don't think there was a price drop this time, which was kind of I kind of expected one. They did mention next gen, just for a second. Phil was interviewed after the show, and was asked about handheld, and he kind of he kind of all but confirmed it. Honestly, he said how much he loves his Rogue Ally and his Steam Deck. And how, and they asked, like, hypothetically, 
if there was one, would it have to be streaming only, or would you be able to natively play these games installed? And he said natively, so that's a good sign. So I, if they make a handheld Xbox, yeah, I'll get one. My library's big enough. So here's hoping that's real. But that is about it for the Xbox Game Showcase this year. It was absolutely stacked, and they kind of absolutely curb-stomped all the competition. It steamrolled the state of play from PlayStation a few weeks back. It just was unrelenting. It was an hour and 15 minutes of non-stop games with, not, with no stopping at all to, to talk. And then after that, you had 25-minute deep dive in Black Ops 6. So it was 100% their best show in a decade, probably their best show ever. So bravo, keep this up moving forward. This is the new Xbox. They're definitely in a new era now. All their, all their chess pieces they laid out over the past few years, all their acquisitions, they finally paid off. We knew it was going to take a while because games take years to make, but this was the year. Every year they say, oh, wait till next year, wait till next year. This was that year. So I think the ball is officially rolling again. Xbox is... I think this kind of turned the narrative around quickly, too. Because they, they're, the narrative around Xbox has been in the dumps all year. Especially after the layoffs, or the, the studio closures and layoffs. But I think this is going to turn it around. So, what did you think of the showcase? Did you think it was as good as I did? I thought it was excellent. I've watched it a couple times. Because I missed some stuff. And uh, let me know in the comments which games you're looking forward to the most. Like, share, subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you next time. Peace out.